So one of the amazing things about Echinacea is not only is it gorgeous, but you can also harvest the flowers and the leaves before the plant is old enough to begin harvesting the roots. So medicinally, most people prefer to use the roots and feel that there's stronger medicinal pow powers, I should say, in the roots, but the plant needs to be at least preferably two to three years old before you start harvesting the root so that you still have some that will grow flowers and come back next year. And I just had divided my echinacea and put this patch in last year, so it's just two years old, and so I do not want to dig up the roots this year. I'd like to let it go once more. But I can come out here and still get some great medicinal benefits from the leaves and the flowers. Now, obviously, these ones are a little bit past the point of prime, as you can see. So we're going to come in and we want to get all of the nice younger flowers and the nice, healthy, bright, vibrant looking leaves. So now that we have harvested all of our beautiful echinacea blossoms and leaves, we are going to be turning this into a medicinal tincture so that we have it for the entire rest of the year. But first up, let's get these rinsed off. So now when it comes to making echinacea tinctures or any tinctures for that matter, you've got kind of your old folk way where you're just kind of eyeballing it. But if you're looking to make a medicinal tincture, it is best to do it by weight. So I just have my little kitchen scale here and mason jars come in handy for absolutely everything. So we're gonna do this in ounces, make sure we've got that teared so we're at zero. And when you're using fresh plant material like this, you don't have to worry like when it's dry and you're grinding it up and trying to create like a really small surface matter. It doesn't really matter as much with this. So we're just gonna stuff all of this into the jar so that we are getting the dry volume weight of our herbs. And we are right at 1.4 ounces. So that means we are going to, it's a one to two ratio. So if you ever look at herb tinctures or if you're new to that, you have the plant material is first and then your liquid for the tincture is second. So we want to do 2.8 ounces of liquid. And when you are making tinctures, especially with fresh plant material, because it has more water content, obviously, than if it's dehydrated, it's really best that you use a 190 proof or 95% alcohol and not a 40 or 80 proof. This is going to help draw out all of the properties. And it's also going to help keep that bacteria at bay because it is the higher strength of the alcohol. So we're going to hit tear because we want that to be at 280. We want this to be completely covered by the liquid. So chopping that up makes that a little bit easier, but I'm just gonna kind of push this down and see if we can get that completely submerged. So I'm making this small amount because that is the only volume that I had of the alcohol. So now we're gonna put a lid on here and we're gonna give that a good shaking. And then after I've kind of shooken that up a little bit, I'm still going to just go back in here, push that down so that it's beneath the alcohol. And I could top this off. I think I actually have a little bit of vodka, which is a lesser proof that I could top that off just to make sure that that stays submerged. And then we are going to let this sit for two weeks, shaking it when we remember. And then after two weeks, we're going to strain that out and we have got an amazing tincture. Now, when it comes to making your tincture, I am fine making that in my clear glass mason jars. But storage wise, we wanna make sure that we're storing it out of direct sunlight and, if at all possible, in a darker colored bottle. 
One of the great things about tinctures is you only need a small amount and these little bottles plus with the dropper so that you can get an accurate dose on them work fabulous. It also means you don't have to harvest a ton because we're taking such a small amount. Now, a lot of people always have questions about, do I have to use alcohol? What about if I'm using it with children or that type of a thing? You're using a very small amount and you're going to be diluting it in liquid. So if you have the liquid hot, like tea or something like that, when you put the tincture in there, the small amount of alcohol that's in there is going to evaporate off. So you're actually going to have very, very small amounts of alcohol, almost immeasurable when you're diluting it in a hot beverage and then consuming it that way. You can make them with vinegar or with glycerin, uh, depending on what it is with echinacea, that would work fine. Some of your more roots or resin-like material are gonna be a lot harder to draw out the medicinal properties if you're not using the alcohol. But the good thing is, is this will be shelf stable as long as it's out of direct sunlight in a dark bottle like this after we've strained it for years. So I don't even have to make it every single year if I don't want to, it has an incredibly long shelf life. Now with echinacea, there's actually, there's two varieties of echinacea and especially when it comes to using it for immune boosting or antiviral antibacterial. There's echinacea angustifolia, and then there's echinacea purpurea. And a lot of herbalists feel that the Echinacea angustifolia is the one that has the stronger medicinal properties and use the root. But even if you have the porphyria, Echinacea porphyria, and you are using the leafy and the flower matter, it still has great immune boosting properties as well as antiviral and antibacterial. I am not a certified medical professional, so this is for informational purposes only, just putting that out there. Um, but it's really best, especially if you're looking at using it for antiviral, that you take it at the first sign of feeling like you're coming down with something. Because the way that it works best when it comes to antiviral properties is if it can come in contact with it. So that's why we actually using this one orally, like in a drink, that it would be coating and drinking slowly. So it's gonna be coating the throat and going all the way down because when it comes in contact with the virus before it goes into the cell is when it actually can help fight that off and stop it from replicating, getting deep into the body um, and being like a full blown issue. If you've already been sick or you are sick and symptoms have really taken hold, then it not, is not going to be as effective simply because once the viruses are deep into the cell, then the echinacea is not going to be able to stop them. But it does also have immune boosting properties. So if you have an autoimmune disorder, then you would wanna take a lot of precaution before using echinacea and you definitely wanna check with your doctor or medical professional on that. If you are interested in learning more about using herbs and home remedies for you and your family, I am doing a free herb class. You can go to melissakinoris.com forward slash herb class to find out a lot more. We'll go a lot more in depth. This is just one of the items that we'll be talking about. And if you're curious about more uses of herbs and growing herbs and their medicinal benefits, then you can check out this video.